Well, I reckon, young fella, what's the duck's name? His name's Speedy. Speedy. <laughs> I reckon, Speedy, you're a lucky duck because we're about to make some duck. We're about to make some soup, and we're going to put some duck fat in there. It's just as well you're an award-winning father, otherwise you might be in trouble. Does he know how lucky he is that he's not going to be melted down to put in our soup? Yeah, he's he's a very lucky boy, but he's he's also a little bit sad because he's here by himself today. He's uh, we wanted to show off a, a little bit of a RNA quality show. He has two daughters who have won second place and third place, so he's oh, he's, he's doing pretty well for himself. Cool. So they little divas. <laughs> I've never been to a duck show, but do you have to obviously clean, like every other show, clean them up and make them all pretty and... Uh, well, you'd think so, but we, we just kind of dumped it into the pen and it, both of them won pretty good prizes, so... There <laughs> you go. Say. We're going to have a crack at making some soap, so Speedy's making a beeline for the other part of the garden. <laughs> well, this looks like the end result of what we're going to learn today, is that right? That is correct. And this is actually the top secret recipe that made us a fair bit of money. So awesome. we're, we're happy to share it with you guys today and yeah. hopefully we guys learn something and we can replicate it and make your own at home. Cool, cool. So this is going to turn out to be not the so undercover soap. Yes. I like definitely. all the different colours. Oh yes, yeah. so es essentially you can change the colour of your soap based on the ingredients you use. So this has duck fat in it so i actually like the white uh, mm -hmm. kind of tallow soaps yep but you can add uh, you know carbon you can add honeycomb and that's yeah. actually uh, interesting enough a little bit of a darker honeycomb uh, oh okay used. and that's right. why it's that color and so like honey with the wet like honeycomb in the wax and i'll melt it down a little bit because right? yeah. i know i've noticed we've got some beeswax here yes we've got some uh, lovely beeswax and it's probably on a second rendition so it's yeah. uh it's, it's pretty good, but you can use any type of beeswax, even beeswax of honey with it. It's not going to make too much of a difference. Wow, look at us go. Cool. Well, I want to get stuck in. This is amazing. I was looking at this. This looks like about the only chemical part of this whole natural process. Yeah. And that's to give us the fuzz, is it? Why water, which would be what they used to use for making soap. And this is called a cold press soap. Mm -hmm. And essentially, you're only using a small amount of lime, so we're only using about 400 grams of lime, and it's about $6 at running, so it's not too much. Yeah, cool. So what they used to use, what did they, did they use now? Uh, well, they use a whole bunch of different chemicals. They use a, a whole bunch of petroleums, palm oils, and just uh, emulsal advisors because they can do giant bats off it. So this is more of the traditional way this is the old soap way of making it, and it's, it's what I was going to say, it sounds a lot more healthy too. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit yeah. more natural. Everything here can be purchased at Pretty bit the supermarket almost, yeah. yeah. At Woolworths or anywhere else, except the beeswax. So you're going to have to find Probably them. the bees' venom. It's and not going to not gonna come from Woolworths. Don't go to Woolworths and look for bee venom and bee... Well, although I was in the hardware store the other day, and I saw some beeswax for furniture polishing. And so if you're really desperate and you don't want to actually get it mailed to you, which you should, you could go to the hardware store and perhaps, but maybe that's different beeswax anyway. So we've got our special bucket. I'm assuming that's where we mix things in. Yes, that's uh, exactly. Chem lab. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the magic bucket. We're going to go and add the lye and actually calculate how much we need. So we need about 400 grams. I'm assuming that's be re really quite accurate. Whether my wife tells me that's be accurate when she's making her soap. Oh, you have to be absolutely accurate otherwise. You're going yeah, to end, end up, up with froth everywhere. You just end up with a whole bunch of oil. Which is pretty much what the lye is meant to do, isn't it? Break the oils down when it hits the water and it's on your skin and then it creates that the foamy part that we recognise as soap. Of course. You just oh, need about 400 grams of yep. measuring it. That's a pretty small amount. What they say is that you should always add the water slowly because otherwise it's going to heat up very quick. So then you carry it away. Yeah, I'm <laughs> thinking I'm going to go and get a, another glass and we'll go and fill up with a little bit of water. Is there a weight quantity of water to the devolving bit of a ditch? It's 1.1 litres in right. this recipe. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the Y into this container here. So I'm assuming the reason we're in a bigger bucket is so we don't get the big foam up that can happen? Yes. Pour a little bit of water down here because it's going to heat up incredibly, incredibly quickly. So and the chemical reaction? 
Yeah, so what you're seeing at the moment is it actually heating up. So if you feel the side of it, you can Ooh. kind of feel that heating up. Yeah, yeah. Now we start measuring out the oil. So this is right. the fast bit. So you can't be mucking about too long. Is that Speedy's cousin? <laughs> That's Speedy's cousin who actually wasn't a good producer. <laughs> Tasted good on the way through. <laughs> yeah, so the duck oil is really for the colour. Just quiet, it smells alright. No. <laughs> this is coconut, raw coconut oil. 1.2 litres of sunflower oil, yeah. It should be sunflower oil because it's more natural or it doesn't really matter. It could be any type of oil. This is just the bulk of it. Yep. What we're going to do now is melt the beeswax on the stove. Yeah, cool. Get it nice and liquid. Yeah, so which pan do I want to ruin? I'm going to choose this one. Yep. Beautiful. Yep, so we're just going to add the whole bottle of macadamia oil. Mm. It's got a nice scent to it. Yeah, it's got some wonderful soap properties with it. So macadamia oil is fantastic to have in soap. Mmm, awesome. Yeah, I mean, tell you what, all the natural ingredients is cool, isn't it? We just got a little heart mold just because essentially it's Valentine's Day coming up and we thought it would be nice to have a nice heart-shaped mold. Look at us go, I tell you what. And awesome. now we're just tipping in some uh, of the beeswax. The beeswax. And now we're going to start the unfortunate process that you know very well. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and so we do actually have a, one of these. Oh, the an electric one. Yay! Electric one here. I was thinking of a hand whisk. It's going to go, that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've spotted, what is that? I've spotted some marigold. Have we popped that in there? Is that for flavor or is yeah, that for something else? That's definitely for looks. And we're yeah. going gonna to put a little bit of marigold afterwards. In afterwards. The ah, there. cool. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Look out. We're off. Now I'm going to get the smallest spoon I can possibly find and use it to get the venom. Don't tell mum I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to use the smallest amount of uh, bee venom we possibly can. So just about that much, which is probably about a gram. So we're just going to add it in. Yep. So I was reading an article about um, bee venom and how it interacts with our skin and what, what we're actually adding it to the soap for. Because there's like a, I guess it was an internet article about yeah. a guy that had a, like a spot on his head and he was using the soap to wash and that went away. So with the dermatitis, like, you know, some people get that on their elbows and stuff. Would that help with that, do you think? Well, I think so. I, I, I mean, it's worth a try. Like, it's, it, obviously it's better than getting stung by some bees out in the hive, so. That would be a less than ideal. <laughs> yes, this is much friendlier. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite thick. It is quite thick, it's looking pretty good. So what we'll do now, we might use our mold. Yep, because I reckon our little bar mix is saying, I'm hot! <laughs> <laughs> we will put it into the small love-shaped heart. I think that would be fantastic, and I'll, I'll try to find some more moulds for us while cool. we're doing that. Oh. Spoon it in there. So normally can you actually use like ice cream containers or anything disposable to actually use as a mould, and yep. normally it turns out really nice. So yeah. cool. it's, it's, for mould making, it's essential that you get something that you like, and it's disposable because you're not going to be able to use it very often. Again, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's going to have its, have a life expectancy of not so long. Although this is reasonably sturdy, so... Oh, oh possibly. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> there might be more than one of James's little heart soap mould yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite warm after all that stirring and the re chemical reaction. I'm not going to get any awards here, James. I'm yeah, looking yeah. like a kite. It's, it's still going to be a nice soap, even if yeah. it uh, doesn't look as nice. I like your belief. <laughs> We're not going for beauty contests, we're going for servability. If I was the wife, I'd get it attack and get the air bubbles out. Yeah, that's, a, that's always Ooh. the good way of doing it. Yeah. Ooh. That smells yummy. All right. Tell you what. And it's even got healing properties now. Not only is it cool and natural, and it can fix stuff. I mean, how bloody good's that? Tell you what, I'm going to have to get some more of these stinger harvesters. I'm going to get home and the wife's going to say, Where's my venom for my soap mix? 
Ice cream containers. Well, that's the way. I didn't accidentally finish them just uh, off camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's as good excuse as any I can think of for having a bit of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's the bee venom tingling my little scar, but it probably is. It's kind of cool already, but it could be the fact that it's still reacting in a bit more. It's, it's probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we're not going to be feeding soap to people that are. This is no, actually yeah. an external thing. Yeah, it's, so, all, it's all topical approaches. It's news for us. Skin wrinkles, it's used to treat uh, melanomas on the skin, and it's used to treat even dermatitis type symptoms. You still have to be careful with bee venom and try a little bit of the soap or any type of bee venom on your skin a little bit slowly and just see if you have an allergic reaction or not because it's important not to have a full body allergic reaction. Over that would be a negative. Yes. Because yes. <laughs> I remember you were saying at the um, conference that you had the little vial of bee venom that you brought in and they got freaked out that it was because it's so basically toxic to be reiterated that it is reasonably deadly in its, in its pure yeah, form. Yeah, so essentially this much, uh, even less than this amount of bee venom will, will kill you very easily. So it's a very toxic uh, substance. It has to be treated with care. Just imagine how many bees it took to sting the petal yeah. to create that much. So, yeah, so just remember, this is not something to be trifled with after we get it into this form. As you say, there's quite a lot of bee venom in that little pot. I mean, you can imagine there's not a lot of venom that's released to react, make the reaction in us when we get stung by just one bee. Yeah, exactly. It's such a small amount and in comparison, this is probably over 10,000 uh, bees have made this. So how long do we have to wait for it to set before we get to the next bit? Ideally, you're going to be waiting about three days before you can use it, but you'd like to wait a little bit longer because it's still a little bit caustic and essentially you want to get rid of the caustic and the lye out of it as much as possible. And the soapification is still happening. So we're up to about three months. But you probably, like you say, you want to let it really mature. mature. And, so it's, it's a bit like a good cheese. You don't want yeah, to be eating course. it straight out of the cow. <laughs> you want to let it chill out a bit and get organised. Of course, once you've been making it for a while, you're going to have the last batch and then this is going to be like obviously oh, waiting gosh. around and like homebrew. So that's dangerous, that stuff, because you get too much of it. You've got to... But anyway, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> Good old me. Yeah, oh mate, yeah, wasn't that an interesting episode? My gosh. Well, that's amazing, James. I tell you what, you've stolen my heart. It's, yeah, it's incredible, dude. Oh, I'm looking forward to giving this a bit of a go.